was a clip from Documentary Now. New episodes air Wednesdays on IFC and AMC+. Congratulations on the show. You know how much I love it. It's so well done. It's so well made. So many great guest stars. Tell us what we need to know about this new season. Uh, we did the whole thing in, uh, in England and Wales. Yeah. And uh, we loved it. We loved doing it. Um, it. This show really comes together very sort of last minute. Mm -hmm. We sort of write it all on email. And uh, it all, it, every season, it almost doesn't happen. We're right. like, is this going to happen? But then it came together. And that, that, the scene you just saw was shot in Wales. Uh, Kate Blanchett did an episode. Oh, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's uh, really like a, a labor of love. All Didn't the way Kate through. Blanchett suggest her, her episode or a story for a documentary? She now. did. And it's, about, it's based on a, um, a, a documentary based in Blackpool mm -hmm. about hairdressers. And her hairdresser just brought it up as like, hey, why don't they do that as an episode? So she told us, and then we did it. And uh, it's all in Blackpool, England. Anyone here from Blackpool? What? <laughs> How did you find filming in Blackpool? Uh, it, that place, I've never seen any place like that. It's, it's like extraordinary. It's a little bit like Atlantic City here. Yeah. Or uh, maybe Reno. And, you know, it's like where they used to sort of go to gamble and stuff. And then it's just sort of stuck in time. Yeah, it's where basically everybody used to go there on vacation. Yeah. Where's Blackpool? Blackpool is... Like north of Liverpool. North of Liverpool. Oh, yeah. So here. So look. Okay, great. <laughs> So you go north so not on the here, M but there. That's right. it. So you right. take the M5. Okay. You do take the M5. Right. Okay. You take I'm... it. <laughs> I, I know how much you love the Beatles. Have you ever thought about doing a documentary now, sort of on like Get Back? Ooh. Is yeah. that something you do? Which Beatle would you play? Ringo. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> yeah. Peace and love. Is uh, that something you'd like to do? I, we absolutely would, yeah. I mean, I love that. That was such a great documentary. It was I loved incredible. it. I, I watched the hell out of it. Did you watch it? I, of course. It's amazing. Closely. I, I, yes, I, all right. I watched it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Fred, we obviously got to know you on, uh, on Saturday Night Live. Did, yeah. you, did you ever audition for us or not? <laughs> I did. You did? Uh, yeah. I sent in a tape. I went to Carnegie Mellon Drama and thought going to conservatory would be a good calling card for Saturday Night Live. Right. And they didn't agree with that. Um, and so I sent in a tape four years in a row, and every year I couldn't get an audition. I wanted to audition so badly. I did one year, I did Philip Seymour Hoffman doing his scene from Mission Impossible 3, the one where he's like, yes. hey, you have a wife, you have an or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he's like, I want to try it different. And then he did his Truman Capote, you have a wife, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the, Lauren did not watch it. Uh, right. <laughs> and so I, I never got on. And then I did The Daily Show, and I got a phone call after I got on The Daily Show being like, hey, Lauren, we'll see you now. And I'm like, I, I can't. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But you were on. That was great, right? You I did a bit on the show, but then yeah. before that, when in 2006, I was in a play in New York, and uh, Lorne Michaels saw the play, and I got this phone call, right? And Saturday Night Live wasn't really on where I was growing mm -hmm. up, so I got this phone call to my apartment, which was like this just sort of service department I couldn't work at, and the phone had never rung before, <laughs> and it never rung after, <laughs> saying, Lorne Michaels would love to invite you to come down to Saturday Night Live on Saturday. It's the last one of the season. And my friend Sheddy, Richard Shedd, who I've known since I was five, was mm -hmm. staying with me, and I, we booked to see The Da Vinci Code, right? And I said, well, can I bring my friend Sheddy? And they said, no, no, it's just one ticket. I said, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to go because I've booked to see The Da Vinci Code. I go into work, and I was like, do you know this guy? It's Lorne. <laughs> and the entire crew of the show went, Dude, you're insane. You have to go. Right? <laughs> so anyway, then a message gets to me, you can bring Sheddy. So we did the play on the Saturday night. Sheddy met me at stage door. The first time in my life anyone had sent a car to pick me up. We get in the car. I couldn't believe it. We drive to Rockefeller. Someone meets us at the mm -hmm. thing. There's people waiting. They're like, you wait. We're like, oh, my God. <laughs> we go in this lift. My mate Sheddy's head's exploding because there's free beer. And he's like, what, I can just take these? And they were like, yeah. He's like, he was like this. I was like, no, no, dude, don't. So anyway, we go down. We sit in the thing. We watch the thing. I go and sit with Lorne for 20 minutes after the show. He says to me, do you want to come down to our... But it was Tina Fey's last show. Do you want to come down? We're having a party. It was where they do the ice skating. Yeah, yeah. In the big thing. There was a huge thing across that says, so you think you're funny? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, would you consider ever staying in New York? And I was like, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and he said, is, this, is that something you'd be open to doing? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, I think you're very funny in the show. We leave, me and Sheddy, 
2.30 in the morning, I'm going, dude, I'm not joking. I'm going to be on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> and he was like, I think you're right. And we were walking around, and we walked for about 15 minutes, and there was, it wasn't even close to being up for consideration that I wasn't going to be on Saturday Night Live. We have talked ourselves into it. It was happening. Never heard from me again. <laughs> It did sound like you were there. Yeah, it did sound never like it. Heard from Lorne until he I probably, got this he job. Probably found, <laughs> he probably found out Chetty was just bagging all that beer and was like, I can't trust him. You cannot <laughs> trust that guy. The beer, the beer bill has never been bigger on SNL. Well, it's never too late. No. But Josh, you've got a new side hustle. Mm. You've got to forget Saturday Night Live. You've got a side hustle in your life outside of the acting. You're coaching a volleyball team? Oh, yeah, this I is true. I didn't have you down as a player. How did this happen? Uh, well, um, I'm obviously very athletic. Uh, <laughs> and my, I got a call one day from my buddy Andrew Major, and he's like, look, uh, I was just at the draft for our kids, well, rec, you know, our rec volleyball team. They don't have a coach. Why don't you and I coach? And I said, it's a great question. The answer is because I don't coach volleyball. Mm. And so <laughs> we were like, all right, well, let's, we can research it. So, so I went on YouTube and I typed in how to coach volleyball as a dad. Mm. And I, our team went undefeated. No! That is a true story. It was just me being like, this is true, and I'm embarrassed to say this. You guys win this game. I'll do Olaf for you after. <laughs> we thank our wonderful guest, Fred Armisen, Josh Gad. Stick around. The big things are here when we come back. Thanks, Jets.